morning. If you want to see how we built this rustic style pine television cabinet with a component uh, shelf, removable shelves, drawers, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning. Welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 239. Uh, today we're going to make a rustic tree uh, uh, TV stand. I don't ordinarily do rustic stuff. You know, that's taking old barn wood and, or pallets or, you know, uh, rough hewn wood and making stuff out of it. Um, I don't really like the, the, I don't really like the style that much, but it, this is one of those uh, deals where you get an internet picture and they say, uh, can you make me this? And so, you know, I got to, of course I'll do it, but I'm going to try to kick it up uh, just a little bit to stay within the goal set by my friend, but um, I, I do want to make it, uh, you know, a little bit more finished looking. Uh, Nutrisystem diet report uh, down to 202. I'm looking at the video. I still look fat. As a matter of fact, I went back to 19, uh, 2012 or 2010. I can't remember which when I first started making videos. And I looked fat back then. So I don't know. Maybe uh, it's hopeless. But anyway, let's knock off the fat talk and knock off the chit chat and get to work. And here's the internet picture that uh, she wants me to reproduce. Uh, these appear to be single boards in the side built around a frame. From, from that drawing, uh, I decided that the, the whole thing was built on a, a framework unlike some cabinets this this thing actually has a framework and then the boards for the sides and the back um, are nailed to that frame so what i'm doing here is building the frame um, i'm keeping it rustic except these these aren't the, these boards aren't fresh hewn boards uh, they're just uh, pine boards. So what I'm doing now is putting in these these long two by braces. This is the bottom one. I already put this in. Uh, now we got uh, two more to put in uh, along the back. Side uh, braces are set in about a quarter of an inch here, but these front braces come all the way out the edge. Um, I divided this thing up into thirds, and so this top shelf here will be ten and seven sixteenths down from the top. Well, let's set it up and uh, see what we got. Now what we got to do is install some cross braces. These will go in there like this and across here. But before we do that, we need to put the backboards on because we'll install the nailers for those braces right up against the uh, backboards. Now I'm going to be uh, putting the sides and back on using this uh, stuff called shiplap pine. 
You don't normally uh, glue this shiplap paneling, but I'm not using it. I'm not using it for its uh, design purpose. This stuff was originally used a lot in the 50s and 60s to make paneled uh, dens. You've probably seen them. Uh, it was a real dark colored pine. I'm counting on these these boards to add rigidity to this uh, framework. And that's the reason I'm going with uh, I'm going with glue. I'm gonna take back what I said about that rustic style. This is looking pretty good. Okay, we got these back uh, boards in. Now we need to put these side boards in. Problem is that these boards right here on the sides are flush with this uh, front brace here. Flush it up against the flat brace. You can see that this board here protrudes its, you know, it's proud of this uh, brace here. I need to take about uh, an eighth of an inch off these uh, side boards. So these are the, uh, these are the boards. Right now they're about uh, seven sixteenth inch thick and I'm going to run them through the planer and take off maybe an eighth of an inch. Yeah, I got those uh, boards playing and I got these uh, boards dry fitted here. Uh, this is the problem I was talking about. See, I want that flush between here and this board here. Okay, I'll go ahead and put these boards in. I'm using one inch staples. I gotta be careful that my staples don't go all the way through. Okay, I had to put those uh, side boards in first because the uh, cleats go up against the sideboards. The uh, cleats that hold up the shelves don't show on the original. So what I've done is uh, leveled up my uh, the piece front to back and side to side and then I leveled off that back cleat and I'm holding it in with uh, two inch, two inch screws. Countersinking them with this uh, long bit here. So it looks like they divided the cabinet up into thirds. One, two, three. So what I'm doing is I'm installing my braces at the one-third point. So what I'm installing now are the cross braces. This cross bracing will hold in the shelves and also reinforce the cabinet. All those, uh, all those uh, pocket screws and stuff we put in before just kind of holding it together while we install the shelves because the shelves and the uh, internal bracing is really what is going to hold this thing together. I used uh, I used a lap board for the 
outer boards, but uh, for this, this shelf boards right here, I'm using uh, bead board. Not using any glue on these uh, shelf boards. Okay, I've got um, this thing positioned level. And I got this jack uh, in there to um, I had to jack it up about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm holding uh, holding this cleat on with uh, uh, drywall, drywall screws. I put these braces in here at the ends just to get them the exact length I want them and now I'm going to move them to the place I want them and that'll make the distances between these things exact. So what we're installing here are these, these braces right here on both sides. Now this is kind of critical because the door is going to fit in here so this opening here has to be square. So I'm going to measure it, measure it 17 and 1 16th, 17th and 1 16th. I'm going to use this torpedo level and I'm going to use a square to uh, make sure everything is uh, right. Okay, you can see this is a miracle, but what I'm trying to do is this uh, vertical brace right here, the boards <clears throat> that define this inner bookshelf here, the boards are flush with that edge. Okay, this point on the piece, this is 18 and 5 eighths. I need to move this center brace, the one that, the brace that goes across the top up here, once it's cut the size, I need to move it over to 17 and 7 eighths. That'll give me a three-quarter inch gap in here so I can put my boards, uh, my side boards down through there and they'll, and they'll lay flush with this uh, vertical brace. So here's a close-up what I'm talking about. See, I got this, this horizontal brace offset in three-quarters of an inch then my sideboards will lay flush with the inside of this uh, vertical frame piece. Here I'm installing the divider boards. I'm using these long staples again because I'm going into this, uh, this thick material. Now to get the alignment or the plumb right, using a, using a square, and I'll scribe the line down here on the uh, shelf, and I'll be installing this 
side pieces at the bottom with uh, pocket screws. I went ahead and put the uh, top on. I put the top on same way I put the uh, second shelf in here. And I put in these little removable uh, shelves. They're just pieces of wood set on uh, on cleats. What we got to do now is uh, make us some doors. I already made one here to, as a prototype. Let's uh, get to it. Here's the doors we're trying to imitate. Uh, two gate hinges with a black knob. Um, I could have just uh, glued up some boards, you know, to make a, a fl flat front on here. But then I wanted to duplicate this pattern of uh, loose boards here. And here's what I came up with. Pretty close match. It looks like a series of boards. Actually, it's a bead board. Gate hinges. Dark knob. Now they've got these in the picture. They get they have these hinges upside down, and I think maybe the reason they did that is so that the door would open completely up. I couldn't really tell by the picture, but I'm I'm guessing that how they built the one in the picture is they they put a, a diagonal brace from this this side here up through here and then a, a brace across the top like you do a normal gate. But I'm gonna try something different, uh, reinforcing the door uh, using some uh, plywood. First thing I'm doing is uh, lining up these boards. You know, in the picture they got uh, The boards go vertically, and so we're going to make them verti vertical in our rendition. Using the bracing method that they probably used is absolutely nothing wrong with it. They've been making gates that way for 10,000 years. I just want to try something different. Then to the back, I'm attaching this piece of plywood. Then I'm going to attach the plywood with uh, with small staples. I, uh, I made the panel up oversized so now I can cut the door out to the exact dimensions on the table saw. Like I said, these are these are decorative hinges. These are decorative screws. These are supposed to be mounted on the outside, um, but but on our example, they flipped the thing over and mounted this on the inside. So I'm duplicating what they did. And the reason I'm doing it, not just correcting the mistake, is because I think they may have done it so that this door would open completely.
I'm uh, staining our piece with uh, natural stain. I think that uh, that best duplicates the uh, picture. Tell you what, I'll go ahead and uh, wipe this stain on and then we'll uh, take a look at it. Well, here's our rustic pine TV stand for Memphis Monday 239. Got doors, removable shelves. They won't come out though. You have to take, you have to lift them up and uh, twist them to get them out. Magnetic uh, hatches. Copied the frame, copied uh, from the internet drawing. Pretty fun, fun project. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be useful. Well, that does it for uh, Memphis Monday 239. Uh, we finished our rustic style pine TV stand. I, uh, I was bad mouthing this rustic style, but I don't see anything wrong with this. 10,000 year guarantee on this. It's probably the strongest thing in the universe currently till our next project. Um, turned out all right. I can't take any uh, credit for designing it. Uh, I copied the picture, which I made sure, uh, I made sure uh, I was clear on. And I guess that's it. Like, favorite, share, tweet, poke, peek, all the stuff to you on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for Memphis Money 240. Thanks for playing along.